Hello and welcome to this session in which we will discuss inflation and interest rate. Now, why do we need to discuss inflation and interest rate? Because we've been discussing the valuation of bonds, the valuation of debt investment. When you buy a debt investment, in other words, when you lend money, what do you have to do? You have to earn certain interests. Now, how do we determine this interest? How do we know that this interest is good enough? How do we know that this interest is not being eroded by inflation? Also, the question becomes, what's inflation? Well, that's what we need to talk about here. What's the relationship between inflation and interest rate? So up to this point, we have looked at interest rate yield and rate of returns, you know, percentages without accounting for something we call inflation so we were just been giving that number say okay here's the required rate of return or here's the interest rate on the bond here's the coupon rate but we need to discuss specifically inflation because inflation plays a crucial role in shaping the actual value of the return how much you are really we're going to look at the real return the real value of the investment so to truly understand how much an investment earns the true to truly know this in terms of purchasing power because at the end of the day you want to know what is your purchasing power it doesn't matter what interest rate you are being quoted how is that gonna help me buy food goods and services we must adjust then for inflation and this is why we need to study the relationship between inflation and interest rates so when evaluating financial rates like interest rate bond yields discount rate rate of return it's essential to make a clear distinction between two things something we call the nominal rates and something we call the real rates so we need to discuss the nominal rates and the real rates and this is what we'll dive into into the session but first we have to have a clear understanding of what inflation is let's go ahead and start to discuss inflation before we proceed any further i have a public announcement about my company farhatlectures.com our corporate finance course is best for online students and students who are taking corporate finance courses we cover financial statements discounted cash flow stock valuation bond valuation, NPV and capital investment decisions, cost of capital, risk and return, as well as other topics. Our course include lectures as well as multiple choice questions. Go ahead and start your free trial today. No obligation. We are here to help. Your success starts here. What is inflation? Inflation is a general rise of the pricing of goods the general price level over time it's it increases so that the percentage increase in general pr price level over time so but how does it work well, the easiest way for me to explain this to you is to give you an example two reasons one is I I will explain the concept of inflation from a real example Two, I'll give you an idea if you want to thank me if you want to uh, reward me for my lectures if I help you if I help you pass the CPA exam you know what to do so what is the example the example is this one of my viewers his name is Elijah he passed the CPA exam and as a result he gifted me $100 from my favorite place Wawa store Wawa it's a convenience store we have it on the East Coast we also have it in we we have Wawa in uh, Florida so so what happened is this he gifted me this after he passed the exam and that was December 16 2021 and usually what we do my wife and I we go to Florida January February will you know we'll take sometime in December we'll take a trip to Florida so here's what happened he so he gifted me this gift card someplace here I would say someplace here when the inflation was still uh, in the US was rising I forgot to use it actually I forgot totally about it I get busy so another year went by and that was tw December 2022 and inflation was almost peaking and guess what I forgot to use it what's the point the point is this if I used it when he initially gave it to me hundred dollar and I'm gonna use it for gasoline to drive my car to Florida so I'm gonna fill out my car with gasoline at Wawa so and for the sake of illustration we're gonna assume it was three dollar per gallon so if we take one hundred dollars and divide it by three I, I could buy 33 gallons of gasoline 
in 2021 when he gave me this $100. Well, I forgot to use it. Well, if I used it in 2022, the same $100, the price of gasoline was approximately, don't quote me on this, approximately, if I said approximately three, approximately five, it means it went up. I don't remember the exact number, but it went up definitely. So the same $100, the same gift card that Elijah gave me in 2022, it would have only purchased 20 gallons of gasoline. Now, obviously, inflation went down, and what happened to gasoline prices? Gasoline prices went down, and my $100 would buy me more gasoline. So you see how inflation works. Inflation can reduce your purchasing power. It can erode your purchasing power. So although it's the same gift card, the same $100, but a year later, my purchasing power eroded. Then, and believe it or not, I totally forgot about it, and I didn't remember it until inflation went down. I went back and I used it. At, wow, but not for gasoline, just in case you're wondering what happened. So what's the moral of the story? If you want to gift me something, gift me from Wawa, gift card from Wawa. Well, the point is, you need to know what inflation is and how does it work. Now, we need to talk, now we know what inflation is, just, it. what is it? It's a percentage increase in the general price level over time. Just everything, everything goes up in price. Why? There are many reasons, we can discuss that later, but this is the idea of it. So there's a real versus nominal return. We have to know this, what's the difference? So when you're evaluating rates, like interest rates, bond yield, discount rate, it's essential to take into account inflation and make a clear distinction between nominal and real. So what's nominal? Nominal rates, that's the, that's the rate that's quoted in the market. So when you buy the bond or when you put your money at the bank, let's assume you go to the bank and you, you want to put your money in a savings account called certificate of deposit and they tell you it's 10%. That's the nominal rate. That's what they're telling you. This rate do not account for inflation. They are labeled nominal because they express the return in current dollar terms, not adjusted for rising prices. So this is how much they will pay you, 10%. Then we have to know what the real rate is. The real rate reflect the true increase in purchasing power. So the real rate takes into account inflation. A real rate, it's real, right? It's real. Tells you how much more how much more you can actually buy with your money after considering the impact of inflation. So if I deposited a $10,000 and I earned 10%, at the end of the year, I earned $1,000. Did I really earn $1,000? In other words, is my $1,000 today, uh, a year from now, one year from now, is the same as the one my $1,000 today? If it buys me less, then my purchasing power went down with that $1,000 because of inflation. So we need to know what's the true return. So the true return could be 10% if there's no inflation. The true return could be less than 10% if we have inflation. And the true return could be more than 10% if we have deflation, which is the opposite of inflation. So every time I talk, we say inflation, we don't use deflation because overall prices go up. That's why we teach you about inflation. Now, everything is true. The opposite is true when we talk, if we assume deflation. So why the distinction is important. A nominal return might look attractive on paper, but inflation is high. The real gain could be much lower or even negative. And sometimes you will look at countries where, where they have an economic crisis and they offer interest rate at 25%. Well, in the US, if you put your money in the bank, we'll give you 2%. You'll be like, wow, why don't I go and put my money in that country? Assuming there is no risk, right? Well. There's inflation. Although you earn 25% in their money, like let's assume Turkey or in Argentina, the, the interest rate is high. But by the time you get your money, you know, if you earn rather than 10%, you earn 25%, most of that 25% is eroded because everything is more expensive. So real rate gives you a better picture of the true value earned on, of an investment over time. So you you invest your money to make money and that money, if it doesn't buy you more goods in the future, then it's not good money. So when you want to get your return, you don't want inflation to eat up your return. So if inflation eats up all your gains, you really aren't any better off. You remember that my $100, it was the same $100, but I can buy less with it. So inflation can erode, can take away your purchasing power. So you need to know when you invest, what is your true return? You need to know what is my buying power? My true return is how much I can boost 
my buying power. Now the best way is to look at an actual example. Suppose you deposit $100 in a savings account that pays 15% annually. Great. After a year, this money grows to $115.50 because you earned $15.50. Now you imagine that a, 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 a gallon of oil cost $5 today when you had the $100. So if you had, if you had the $100 today and you bought gasoline, you could have bought 20 gallons. And let's assume inflation is running at 5%. So if inflation is running at 5%, the price of gasoline a year later becomes 525. Now, I'm using gasoline as an example. It's a bad example because gasoline prices could go up and down for reasons other than inflation, but let's assume gasoline prices is moving with inflation. So the price of gasoline is 525. Now, you earned $115.50 more. Now what's going to happen to your purchasing power? Because you earned $115, now you have $115.50. If you take this new money, the, grow, the money that grew, and you want to buy gasoline, you can buy 22 gallons. Hold on a second. Did you earn 15%? No, you did not earn 15%. So even though your money increased by 15.5, this is your growth in your money because you went from 100 to 115.50, which is 15.5%. Your purchasing power only grew by 10%. Let me prove it to you. A year earlier, you could have bought 20 gallons. Now you can buy 22. So if we take two divided by 20, your true Purchasing power is only 10%. Why? Because here's what happened. Yes, your total return is 15.5%. No one can argue with that. Of that amount, of that amount, 5% was eaten by inflation. So what's left? What's your true rate? Is 10%. And we're getting we're we're getting to see this. Now this is approximate. Inflation approximately five your real return is approximately 10. Now there's a formula, we're gonna see how we can compute this, but I hope you got the point. You did earn, the bank told you, you earned 15.5, 100%, they gave you $15.50. But as inflation went up, $5.50 of your purchasing power was eroded. So if you wanted to buy the, the gasoline to go to Florida, you can only get two additional gallons, two additional gallons. Now, what am I saying? What I'm saying is this. If the prices of gasoline did not go up, if your true return did not go up, so we're going to take uh, $115.50 and divide it by $5, and let's see how much would that give you in terms of purchasing power to see if inflation did not eat up your, uh, your return, 115.5. 115.5 divided by $5 per gallon, you could have bought 23.1. So you could have bought 3.1 more gallons. So 3.1 divided by 20, you guessed that it, it's going to be 15.5%, 15.5%. So notice you earn 15.5, but it's not true. Your only return is the actual return is 10%. The real return is 10%. So the 10% is the real interest rate. It reflects the actual increase in what your money can buy you. And this is what you need to know. You have a real return and you have a nominal. The nominal is 15.5. The real is 5 and the inflation part is, uh, the, the, I'm sorry, the real is 10 and the inflation is 5, approximately. Now let's take a look at this multiple choice question from farhatlectures.com. In order to increase their purchasing power, an investor should purchase bonds offered at a discount, offered at a premium, providing a positive real rate of return with a nominal rate of return lower than the inflation rate. Which one we could, Im we could immediately take out? You don't want a nominal rate that's lower than the inflation. <laughs> it means you are losing money. So if, if, the, if the nominal rate is... 10% and the inflation is 12%, it means you're losing 2%. So that's out. That's out. You don't, so this is an easy elimination. So we're left with A, B, and C. Should you purchase a bond offer at a discount or a premium? A discount or a premium does not tell you anything about your purchasing power. Your purchasing power, whether you can buy more or less with your money. 
to increase your purchasing power you want to have a positive real rate of return if you have a positive real rate of return then you would then your purchasing power goes up then your purchasing power goes up and we'll answer this question this is what we mean by increasing your purchasing power by increasing your real rate of return you if we say increasing your nominal rate it does we cannot answer that question because you could have a for example you could you, the real return could be 10 percent and the nominal could be 25 but if the nominal is 25 and the inflation is 25 it means you're earning zero you want to know what's your real return so your purchasing power is increased by the positive real rate of return whatever that happens to be you your purchasing power would increase by that much what should you do now whether you are an accounting finance CPA CMA CFA studying for your prof for, for your professional certification what should you do go to Farhat lectures look at additional resources lectures multiple choice exercises that's gonna help you invest in yourself that's the best investment you can make